Hey everyone, hope you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna look at uranium. We'll take a dig into it, uh, give you my opinion. Uh, again, in the short term, guys, I'm not a huge um, fan of trading short term price movements. Uh, I usually like playing the big picture game type stuff. And someone has brought up, uh, this is on Twitter. Uh, I'll read it to everyone so you guys can kind of see and I'll, I'll answer it in my, and give you my opinion here. It says, I've watched a couple of videos pointing out to a, sh a head and shoulders pattern that is developing on a lot of the uranium equities. This technical trader pointed it out. Justin Hewn also saw it. Check it out, Andy. What do you think? And yeah, I checked out that. Uh, yeah, and they're, they're, I can tell you the pattern that they're pointing to. And I will give you uh, my opinion on all this stuff here on uh, on the chart. So again, um, what I look at are the three pillars. Ratios. So that's what tells you your valuation. Uh, we're going to look at also uh, technical analysis. And that's what this is what we're talking about. And then market conditions. Uh, market conditions are looking at inventories, looking at market deficits, looking at uh, other commodities. Basically looking at uh, not just your sector, you're combining all of the information uh, together and looking at the, the conditions of the market and what other sectors are doing at that time. So I'll, I'll highlight the bull and the bear cases uh, in uranium at this time and what I see in the charts. So let's dive in here and, and I'll give you my opinion on um, what the chart patterns look like. So what, what I do first, and I'm just going to kind of look at the market conditions and get a good feel here. So I'm going I'm to go back and look at the DXY. Uh, the dollar is strong. And that's usually, you know, anything priced in dollars and all of our commodities are priced in dollars has been a huge headwind, generally speaking, for a lot of the commodities. So as the dollar goes up, that's a headwind for uranium, for precious metals, for any of these commodities that are priced in dollars. So that's the first thing. That's one of the market conditions you want to look at. It's like, okay, we've got some, some headwind in the dollar. The 10-year yield has been rocketing higher. And historically, that's actually, I think, been a good case uh, for energy because energy in general, they, they go up, it is inflationary, and yields typically chase inflation. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And we're seeing a gigantic breakout or a new shift to increasing rates uh, for that, that downtrend line break. So that I would say is bullish because we're going to see bonds sell off and that money's going to rotate into uh, commodities and precious metals uh, and, and into something that's going to work. We're also seeing that the SPX, which is the S&P 500, is also going into a large pullback here. And we very well could um, lose ourselves here to the downside. So this is kind of our, our support line and we're playing with it right now. We're, we're knocking on the door. If we lose this and we head lower, uh, this could bring down the overall stocks with it. You know, a lot of the commodity stocks, they're it depends on what this thing does and how it breaks. If we see a large move in the S&P 500, we could see a, a, a drawdown in our commodities. So the overall markets, the dollar and the 10-year yield, uh, I think are they're providing headwinds to stocks, and I, I think they're providing tailwinds to commodities. And we've got a lot of forces opposing each other right now. This is this is in a transition period. Transition meaning uh, there's fear in the markets. There's recessionary fears is what I'm talking about. People are selling bonds because of inflation. So it's a it's a inflationary recession or stagflation that people are worrying about. And I don't know if they're positioning in an aggressive sector like uranium. Uh, is fully as they're going to if that recession, recessionary fear were to kind of ease off a little bit, uh, especially if you're getting large drawdowns and pullbacks in the bond markets uh, and also in the S&P 500, just the, the dramatic decline in those two areas. So 
Um, I think that this is going to run its course. It could still have some further downside. And this very well could drag uranium with it uh, to some degree. So then uh, if we were to scroll down, I should say scroll up, and look at uranium sector of the futures contract pricing. Um, so this is obviously directly related to uh, uranium. And what we see here is, I would say, a very bullish setup. So why would I say that this is a very bullish setup? We have strong support resistance. Uh, is this white line going across the, the screen here? We've got using this as support, support, we broke down, hit it as resistance, and now we came up and we've broken through that resistance. We've sat on it. We've broken above it. We've come on back. Could it come back and do another retest move back down to $42? Yes, it could. There's nothing saying it can't, and it very well could. But there's a strong support level at about $42 um, of a long-term support uh, support line. So we've got support underneath us. I don't think it's just going to fall to the downside, at least the uranium futures pricing. If you look at SPUT, SPUT, and I, and I think what they're kind of looking at is they're looking at this shoulder, head, shoulder, and they think it might come down here. But technical analysis doesn't, and, and, and knowing the pattern doesn't mean that that's the way the thing's going to necessarily trade. What we're trying to gauge with chart patterns is the, we'll call it the herd mentality, the herd mentality between humans. And then the question should be, well, what market conditions would cause uranium to sell off? We're seeing deficits in the market. They're eating through inventories. We just don't know how much inventory is left. Uh, it's kind of an opaque market when it comes to inventories. So it's hard to tell how much is left. But when I look at this and look at it from a weekly candlestick basis, <clears throat> this to me looks bullish to go higher from the candlestick patterns. And usually when you see the candlestick patterns, uh, bullish candlesticks have large, big up uh, weeks, smaller down weeks, and then you get these bullish engulfing candlesticks. And this is a, what I call a bloody nose, where this could potentially head higher in the Sprott Physical Uranium Trust. So that's in this trust. We do have resistance above us at uh, $18.15 that we need to break. We've hit it multiple times in the past. We hit our head on it again recently. And this also has the lead-in pattern that I usually see. And sometimes, uh, sometimes you get one last leg lower like that. It's possible. Uh, it's also possible when you zoom in that we've already had that kind of ABC correction, and now we're coming on the up phase. So, you know, I, the short, short term, I'm not claiming to be the, the expert of all experts in trading short term, because uh, I think most people lose money in the short term if you're trying to do the, that type of trading. Um, I'm sure people think that there's others that are all that great. I just, I don't do it. I don't find it to be that successful, and the rewards aren't as big. But I mean, one could also say that on this pullback, you can draw a line across here and you've got a shoulder, head, shoulder, and a move higher. Uh, that is an inverted head and shoulders on this pattern here. Uh, and then someone would say, well, no, 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 no. There's a shoulder, head, shoulder. Now, which one is, is more accurate? <clears throat> well, to me, this one here, is actually more powerful because you have the buying candlesticks on the right hand side signaling a move to the upside you also have uh, other ratios that are supporting that type of a view if you look at uranium that's urnm <clears throat> we've got if you look kind of a big picture view you've got these lows uh, these lows are be are creating higher and higher lows we do have lower and lower highs. We basically have a gigantic um, pattern that's forming where the lows and the highs are starting to converge into each other. <clears throat> what that means is that we are going to have a break at some point in the future. Now, if I were to back out and I were to look at the candlesticks from a monthly perspective, 
<clears throat> would I be bullish or bearish? Well, what I'm seeing is I am seeing large selling pressure candlesticks on the monthly uh, basis. We can see that we've got a bearish engulfing here, or almost a bearish engulfing, bearish piercing, something on the, on the lines of that. But we also have a bullish engulfing here, and this may not technically meet it, uh, but it's close. Hard to say. Really hard to say what is going to happen here. We've got buyers and sellers basically duking it out on this side right here. Nice big pull up. We still had somewhat of a, a larger pullback here, and we're waiting for more data here. That's really what I'm waiting for. And we, we zoom into the weekly candlesticks. We see large selling pressure on all of these candlesticks here. They are all bearish engulfing patterns. Now, if we look at the bottom, we've got some bullish engulfings um, forming down here. And of course, this is this is always kind of what happens here. There's another kind of bullish candlestick there. Um, those are kind of like your, your, your pivot points in a chart. And we've got pivot points on the on the downside here where we could head lower. Uh, this bounce isn't really that great given the two selling pressure weeks uh, right in this corner here. So big selling pressure, small bounce. We could head lower uh, down here. That is a possibility, but anything's a possibility in the short term. Anything can run these markets, either up or down when you're looking at it from a very short-term perspective. We go into the dailies, and the dailies don't look horrible, but they don't necessarily look great. I mean, we've got a bullish engulfing here to start this move. We came back down. I don't see. We've got some good buying pressure through here. We don't have too much selling pressure. It's kind of just moving and, and, and moving sideways, looking at the candlestick sizes, the, the buying and selling pressure as this thing goes up and down. So I don't I don't see I don't see a clear winner here. If I were to give the the side just looking at the candlesticks and the size of the candlesticks, which do matter, uh, I would give that win, we'll call it, to uh, the buyers actually. With, with the recent development on this side over here. Lot, lot smaller selling pressure than buying pressure. But if the overall market sells off, it could drag us lower. That is a possibility. Um, I also see, let me see here. Yeah, that's what I see. I don't see a head and shoulders or anything in this pattern there. Uh, CCJ, another one. Uh, if you're looking at the lows, your lows continue to step up and it's looking really good. now. Are we going to break this high right at this spot up here? We have not broken that high yet. So we do have a, a lower high that is playing out. But we also have higher lows. So we are basically converging those highs and lows in some sort of pattern here. And that's what you look for. So is this bearish or bullish? It's neither. It's moving sideways with a bullish momentum tilt is what I'll call it. Because, you know, you've got that there, and then you've got this lows coming up, and we're probably going to go into some corner here and see what happens. Uh, if we come into a corner, usually if they're pointed upward, it's bearish. If it's pointed downward, it's bullish. But when you look at this from a big long-term perspective for Camco, this still looks bullish to me. Um, and we've got large buying pressure months. We have a bullish engulfing another almost bullish engulfing there but we came on up and then the selling pressure is coming up into kind of this this flag pattern which is typically a bullish formation because you entered it from the top you go sideways and then you break so i i would say camco is bullish when looking at it from this perspective now if i take a couple of other uh, perspectives using ratios um the ux to silver so this is the uranium futures pricing to silver future pricing. Uh, and I look at this, this looks bullish to me. We've broken out against silver to the upside. We're getting a little bit of a return move. Uh, and then I think we're going to move on up probably with crude oil. And we'll look at crude oil here too. We've got uranium versus the S&P 500. Uh, your momentum is down. Your momentum is sideways. And I think your momentum uh, is going to start to go up here at any second. That's also looking good. Uh, we're just stuck right here moving sideways with a little bit of resistance. We look at uranium versus gold. Uranium versus gold, 
down momentum, sideways momentum, and now we're starting to get a little bit of upside momentum here, and I think we're going to move higher. So when looking at all of these uh, ratios, um, uranium's looking very good against all of the other assets. Uh, I'm, I will, I'll skip over that crude oil, and then uranium to copper looks good. We're hitting our head on some resistance. If we can break that resistance, it looks very uh, positive and bullish. Uh, this looks positive and bullish because you can see large buying pressure, small selling pressure. Uh, it's that stair step pattern uh, that we see as we move higher. So looking at uranium and looking at all of the other commodities, uranium looks like it wants to outperform. Uh, so then the question is, are all these commodities going to fall? Are they And, and uranium just falls less? It's potentially could do that. But um, one thing I also look at, you know, the CRB to S&P 500 commodities, again, we're looking at market conditions around uranium. That's also heading higher. That looks really good for commodities to outperform stocks. If that's the case, if money's flowing into commodities, the general commodity pool, we'll call it, uh, I, I would think that uranium is included in that, and that will be also positive for uranium. And then when you look at crude oil, we'll go up to crude oil and check that out because that is an energy um, area. And uh, crude oil, in my opinion, has just broken out of this downtrend and it's heading higher. That looks really good. And if you look at natural gas, uh, that ha that could have a little bit more selling pressure to get to this area down here. And I think when we get about a month out, I think natural gas is going to bottom here. Uh, probably just a little bit below where it's at. Maybe we get to 580, about a dollar lower, perhaps. Uh, and then we'll head higher. And I would view that as a buying opportunity for natural gas. And when looking at it from the lens of uranium, uh, natural gas is a competitor to uranium. Natural gas pricing over in Europe is incredibly expensive. I think that uranium prices are probably going to go higher, given that the natural gas prices and electricity prices over in Europe are astronomically high. So I would think that uh, with the energy shortage over there, that they're going to start turning on uh, more nuclear power plants or extending them uh, over time. So um, the way that I view this is I don't really care what the short term, you know, what it really does in the very short term. If it pulls back, it's a buying opportunity for me. Uh, I'm accumulating for the big bull, the big bull move. In the short term, we very well could have a, a, a pullback. The overall markets could pull back, uh, and we had a little bit lower in the short term. And what I'm going to do, you know, you know what my thing I'm going to do? I'm going to buy more. <laughs> I'm going to buy more and just accumulate. Uh, the big overall trend, when you look at that commodity to stock ratio, is higher for commodities. You look at the big overall trend for yields. Yields are going up. This is all positive for commodities. And the short term, day to day, month to month movements are always very difficult to read. But everything I see here in, in terms of evidence, it all looks good for uranium. It looks very good. And uranium is very cheap in relationship to all their assets. So, you, what you're going to do is you should develop your own opinions. And what I do is I don't even really listen to anyone else. Their opinions do not matter that great to me. I mean, someone would have to really have eye-opening information for me to change my mind. And people can say that a recession's here, it's going to kill demand. But the problem is, it's not killing demand. The demand is being killed by energy. The root cause of the problem is energy. So what they're doing is they're looking at the previous paradigm. The previous paradigm, we had recessions from inherent weaknesses in the market, uh, and we had surpluses of energy. Energy wasn't the root cause of the problems of these recessions. There was only one recession that had a root cause of energy, and that was in the 1970s. That was considered stagflation. Basically, stagflation is a recession caused by energy, at least the way that I view it. Uh, and, and I don't know if there's any... You could have supply chain shortages, I guess, where you have the markets get a little bit weak and you have GDP can shrink because of supply chain shortages. We may have a combination of both of those things, supply chain shortages and energy shortages and energy shortages leading to supply chain, to supply chain shortages. It's, they're all kind of interlinked. So I view it that um, 
if energy is the root cause or the driver of the problem, that I want to be participating in the root cause of the problem because that's what needs to be fixed if we want to grow the economies. And if, if we go that route, if we want to grow it, we need more energy, period. Uh, Europe is definitely going to struggle. It's going to be uh, tough over there. But I think it's driven by energy. So I want to partake in the energy trade and I want to partake in the precious metals trade because of currency problems. If there's any bond or currency crisis, uh, because when you have over levered systems and you have an energy crisis, you can potentially have a currency crisis. They are interlinked. I've said that the, the entire time, and that's why I've set up my portfolio the way I have. So uranium, is it an inverted or is it a head and shoulders? I don't think so. But if it is, we have another buying opportunity. If uh, we've got an inverted head and shoulders, that means we're going to head higher. Which one is right? Tough to say in the short term, guys. It all depends on a, a, a lot of variables for uh, things to move in the short term. Uh, oil could go higher here. It looks very good. Uh, I, I would think that would help uranium, but the overall markets look kind of poor, uh, and that's going to drag uh, uranium down. Which one's going to is going to be the right in the end? I don't know. You've got like 15 opposing forces all happening all at the same time. Very hard to predict short-term price movements. But if I were to wager uh, over the next two, three, four, five years, as the probability of success goes up, uh, I'm thinking that uranium is going to go much higher. Based off the cost curves, based off the long-term technical analysis patterns, uh, they all look really good. And based off the ratios and the valuation of uranium in relationship to all the other assets. So that's where my, uh, my mind's at. Hopefully it answers your guys' questions. And I am a uranium bull, guys. I know some people said that uranium, I said some things like uh, uranium isn't speculative in itself. Uranium is a commodity like all the other commodities. What is speculative are a lot of the companies in uranium. That's what makes it hard for me to dump a bunch of money into some of these companies. The companies. The companies are speculative because they do not have cash flows. If you do not have cash flows, you are speculating that money will filter into it somehow. Cash flows can be paid back to you in dividends. They can, be, they can buy all their shares up and increase their earnings per share dramatically. Uh, they have control over it if you've got cash flows and infrastructures in place. Um, so that's what I mean by it's more speculative. It's the companies themselves, not the necessary commodity. All right, guys, that's all I've got. Give me a thumb up for the content. If you guys like what I'm talking about and you need help in this commodity bull market, definitely hit up the finding-value.com channel. Um, go there, sign up, get a platinum membership. We do have a 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time question and answer session for the platinum members. So I'll see you there if you're a platinum member. Uh, 5 p.m., don't forget. Log on, ask me questions. We'll talk about some of my favorite stocks and the individual names. Uh, of what I'd be accumulating at this time. All right, guys, uh, we'll catch you next time. This is Finding Value.